Good evening, ladies and gents, wherever you may happen to be, and welcome to episode 171 of Love at First Scent with me, Persil Ace, coming to you live, as always, from YouTube. We have a very special, I think we can call feature-length episode for you today, because I expect we're going to be pushing that hour. Uh, not only do we have a special guest, we also have a top 10 best of rundown. So I don't want to take up any more time with this introduction, because I think we need as much time as we possibly can squeeze into the the hour to, to start talking about perfumes. Uh, please interact as much as you possibly can. And if you have any questions for us or any comments for uh, about the perfumes that we choose, um, it's always nice if you also tell us where it is that you are watching from, because I personally get a kick out of knowing where people are watching from. So what are we doing today? Today I have in my virtual studio none other than Max Forty himself. So I'm going to give you a chance to say hello, Max. Glad to be here once again with Papa Persolais. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll let you know, I'm not going there. And what we are doing today, folks, is we are presenting our top 10 best exciting perfumes. I'm going to present five and Max is going to present five. And what did we mean by exciting perfumes? Well, when I when I set this challenge for Max, to my mind, what I, what 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 I had uh, what what I sort of envisaged uh, was perfumes that fill you with a sense of energy or speed or dynamism. Uh, a few minutes ago, Max and I were chatting just before we went live, and he used the word invigorated, which I actually thought was a great word. So, what what sorts? What were your guiding principles when you chose your five, Max? So first of all, I was thinking about fragrances that really made me feel great, like gave me a sense of energy, a sense of power, uh, you know, vibrancy, like those kind of adjectives. And, and, and I think notes, you know, thing, things like citrus notes, orange, limes, neroli, orange blossom, uh, perhaps mint, uh, some herbal components, eucalyptus, you know, those type ginger. But, you know, fragrances that really inspired me to start my day, so to, so to speak, like things that I normally gravitate towards in the morning when I want to get you know, things going and I'm drinking my coffee, I just shaved, you know, so those type of things. So these fragrances here, since we're doing a top 10, it's five each. Of course, there were a ton of choices to choose from. But I think these are the five that over the past two years are the ones that really give me the sense of energy and invigorating and, you know, let's go, let's, you know, grab the world by the tail, so to speak. I, I love the fact that, I mean, I completely agree with you, but I've just seen a comment out of the corner of my eye. I, I, I love my viewers because Woozy here is saying, Sauvage is oh invigorating boy. the same way nails on a chalkboard tingles the senses. <laughs> Play nice, okay, be good. And we've got Yura saying, are those matching shirts? Um, the answer to your question is no, but Max and I have already remarked on the fact that we obviously decided to go for... Um, Bold patterns, I think we can say. Max, Max is sporting. Max is sporting a a floral pattern. I think you can see, but he's gone. He's gone for the short sleeved look. Whether whereas for me over here in the south of England today, it's way, way, way too cold for me to be. I have I have to be wearing layers. Um, is this live on Max's channel as well? Says Wizzy. No, that's not how YouTube streaming works. Okay, so this is going to be. This is live on my channel, but it will it will stay as a recording on my channel. And I should say. But even if you're not watching the live, if you happen to be watching this as a recording, please feel free to leave a comment, uh, ask a question, and either Max or I will try and get to your comment or question in due course. Now, it's interesting you went through a list of some of those notes because I found myself, when I was choosing my five, I found myself consciously trying to reject certain things because I think my default setting for an exciting perfume is, is a leather. And I thought, I thought, okay, I, I can't turn this into my top five leather scents because I think regular viewers know that that, that I love leather scents, that probably if I had to choose my, my two favorite genre of perfumes, it would be either incense compositions or leather compositions. And I thought, no, I can't just do one leather after another. So this was a little bit of a challenge to myself to, to try and go for other forms of perfumery that are equally exciting. But and 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 hopefully that will that will be clear as we go through the list. I did have to include one leather though, but not a leather that I've ever talked about before. So without further ado, as you are my very esteemed and honored guest, Mr. Forty, I'm going to turn the tables over to you and say, what is your first exciting perfume? I have no idea what's coming up. So 
like I talked about, you know, Neroli's, uh, you know, limes, citruses. I I thought the genre, the cologne, the eau de cologne genre was very good and inspiring to me over the years. And, you know, of course, I could have gone with uh, 4711. I could have gone with, um, you know, uh, the original Colonia from Aqua di Parma. All of those have that same kind of a feel and, and you know, the energy that it gives me when I wear them. But I chose to go with this one right here, which is uh, Tom Ford's and Roli Portofino. The reason why I chose this one is because it encapsulates that genre, you know, that Colonia genre, but it actually amps things up. There's a little bit of an amber at, at the base. There's some spices here. So it gives it a, a nice little twist, but still very true to that profile that I love. So absolutely. I mean, I smell it just transports me to like the Riviera, you know, a nice bright day, you know, even like it's it's sunny here today, really sunny. It's probably like in the 50 Fahrenheit, which I don't think it's that warm, but it's like the beginning of spring. You know, it still gives you a nice uh, hope for better days. You know, we're just coming out from a week with, which we had a ton of snow, like over two feet of snow. So this here gets me thinking of tropical, of, of you know, just great weather, just puts a smile on my face. So this would be my first pick. Are you familiar? I'm sure you are. This, I mean, if you know the Colonia genre, this is pretty much what this is, just a little bit amp amplified. Uh, absolutely. So this is the Forte version, which I believe came out at the same time as the Aqua version, because they sort of did the strong one and the light one at the same time to complement the, the the main Neroli Portofino. Uh, you've got at least one vote of confidence here, saying from Angela. By the way, Angela and Angela will know what I mean here. I'm so pleased that your comments are coming up. Um, Angela and I were having a conversation on social media earlier because some of the comments that she's been leaving on my videos are being chewed up by YouTube for no reason that we can uh, ascertain. But I'm, I'm glad that you're able to, to, to leave a comment, Angela. Um, uh, Joanna, uh, as much as I wish I didn't, sorry, as much as I wish I didn't like it, I love Neroli Portofino, well blended, and it does put a smile on my face too. But Joanna, why do you why do you wish you didn't like it? Was there something about the fact that it's I don't know that it's that it's Tom Ford? I really really like Neroli Portofino, and I think that Forte version is probably my favorite version of it. And I cherish the few drops that I have left. It, it's interesting with Tom Ford because out there out there in the world, I think it's generally accepted that the perfumer who made Neroli Portofino is Rodrigo Flores Rue of, G of Givadon, but but Tom Ford still do not formally, officially release the names of any of their perfumers, which I, I, I really still don't understand. I would have thought that of all people, Tom Ford would want to release the names of the perfumers, but but anyway. I agree. I think it's rather weird, and, and it's almost like when he talks, because he kind of you know does the commercials himself, it's almost like he created them himself. You know, which which is kind of bizarre. I think these these noses, these perfumers definitely deserve the credit for sure. OK, now, Joanna is explaining why she wishes she didn't like it to Nerelli Portofino. She says it's because of Mr. Ford and his advertising campaigns, which is kind of what we were talking about uh, just now. Um, you won't believe me when I say this, or maybe you will. I mean, but, uh, by the way, the people watching again, Max and I have not conferred on our lists, but I <laughs> Sorry, or our shirts? No, true, absolutely. Um, um, but I had a feeling that you would go for cologne-style scents, and I actually saw my bottle of Neroli Portofino in my perfume cupboard while I was choosing my scents, and I'd thought, oh, I wonder if Max will go for that one. Did you find yourself thinking, oh, I wonder if he's going to go for that one, or did, did, were you trying to sort of think about my choices? To be honest with you, not this time around. I, I actually thought we were going to have some coincidences when we did the, the 1970s video uh, in the series that we're doing on my channel. I thought we were going to have yeah. at least one. But because you went a different way a little bit, I thought, okay, I, I think we're safe that we're not going to have too many coincidences this time around. But I could be wrong. That's cool. And by the way, for those of you who aren't aware of what Max is referring to, over on Max's channel, uh, we're doing a series of best of perfumes from different from the various decades. We've already done the video on uh, the best perfumes of the 70s, which is up on Max's channel. We're scheduled to record the video on the best of the 80s very soon, which will mean that it will be up on Max's channel soon after that. But you can get the notifications of new videos on his channel if you if you if you subscribe to it and also i i will link to that video on my social media etc cetera, etc cetera. so we've done one down and personalities needs to stop rabbiting on because we need to do one of mine so i guess maybe i will go in a similar-ish vein to you uh 
This is a perfume that I was completely blown away by as soon as I, I tried it, and it became one of my favorites of the year when it came out. This is from 2015, and it's from a brand called Olfactive Studio, and this is a scent of theirs called Panorama, uh, composed by a chap called Clément Gavary. Um, and what do I like about this one? I'm just going to spray it. Now, for me, that is a lot of perfume usage, okay? To be actually going down uh, half a bottle. I love this one because it just smells electric. It has got one of the most convincing, not that you get this particular accord many times, but it has a wasabi accord. And it's just, it just, it's just a sparks flying off the blotter because it it is green and yet it seems it feels like is it's green tinged electricity and you're getting this kind of horseradish rootiness and you smell it and you think wow i never thought i'd actually want to smell of horseradish but i kind of do similar to um comme de garçons rouge which came out last year which has a very very strong beetroot note um but what's wonderful about this is that after the after the fizz after the the kind of jagged danger those those rough jagged edges of the horseradish fades away you get a really really um sensuous uh opoponax myrrh dry down which which is as beautiful as it is surprising because you kind of don't expect the the, the green to go into the myrrh in that way um Every single uh, perfume from the main range from this brand is very directly inspired by a specific photo. And the photo for this one, if you Google it or if you go to the uh, to the brand's website, you will find it. The photo for this one is really fascinating because it's a very, very harsh juxtaposition of the urban and the, and the rural, of the sort of civilized and the wild. Um, and you get that in the perfume. You completely get it in the perfume. Um, and, and, and immediately, it, it is just this instant fizz of energy for me. Um, Gavin is saying, horseradish is not that far off iris, in my opinion. Yeah, you may be right in terms of the, in terms of the rootiness. Um, and, oh, we've got another vote of confidence for our wardrobe, Max. Good morning from Washington, D.C. Those shirts are, I, I, how do you say that emoji? On fire, I suppose. <laughs> For fire. So, um, Olfactive, Olfactive Studios Panorama. Have you ever smelled this one, Max? 100%. Uh, Shalene uh, Villot is amazing. I actually uh, met her at a Sons in 2019, and I do, uh, I don't have, I had a, a 50 mil of Panorama, which is completely gone now. I have actually reviewed it in 2014, 2015 on my channel years ago. And like you said, it's an extremely amazing transition from that horse reddish. Uh, wasabi note, which is very unique, and it goes down into this opoponax. I mean, it's just very unique composition. And Olfactive Studios is another underrated, like amazing brand that hardly ever gets talked about. Uh, Chambre Noir is another one from them that I love. But yeah, that's a really good one. But I would also, I completely forgot about it, but like since you mentioned that fragrance, there's one called Still Life in Rio, which is an amazing scent. When I think about party and fest festiv festivities, you know, it's got this nice caipirinha, which is like a, a very particular traditional drink to Brazil. So that's another one that I love. So that's a great choice. I'm 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 glad you agree. And 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 yes, I'm I'm glad you're saying that the brand is 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 um not enough on our radar. I I, I think I think they're doing really, really interesting work. Um we've got we've got Kristen A saying, I'm guessing that means two of my favorite frag heads live. Awesome. Well, we're very, very pleased that you're that you're able to join us. You're very, very kind. So we've done two, Max. We're doing well. What's your what's your second choice? Well, this one here. When it comes to like invigorating and uplifting fragrances, I couldn't do it without it because it reminds me of my childhood when my father used to get ready to go to work and he used to splash it in his face. And right when he left the house, I would sneak into the, the bathroom and steal a few splashes for myself. And I'm talking about an old classic here from 1968. Just to me, it's, it smells of, you know, I'm ready for the day. And it, I still wear this very, very... <laughs> 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 it's a love and hate, but you have to respect it. This is Fabergé's Brut. I this is going to get some comments. <laughs> Go on. I love it. I just, it's incredible. It's got the rough, rugged fougere elements, green, earthy, but it also has 
a lot of the more uh, gentle elements of the florals. There's jasmine, there's ylang-ylang, there's some florals here, some fruits, some citruses. So it's like yin-yang, really. But people most think about this being very raw, humble. I mean, you know, I put this on after I shave or I'm ready to face the day. And it just gives me this, you know, just like I, the bottle is green. I feel like the Incredible Hulk. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> this is... I, I love I love the fact that you've gone for brute because this is going to get some comments. Love the champagne bottle design, says Yura. Angela, on the other hand, goes with oh no, and how many exclamation marks is that? I think that's five exclamation marks there. But I mean, you you've brought up brute. I the, Gavin saying more Burt Reynolds choices from Max <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Should I grow a mustache? Um, Cole, I got into perfumes via the revival of wet shaving, so I have to give Brute its due. Interesting, interesting way of getting into Brute. Um, I think everyone's dad wore that. Well, mine did, absolutely, mine did. Um, Elvis wore Brute, it's amazing. Uh, A2Z in one saying, Brute reminds me of my grandparents' bathroom, it smells kind. Oh yeah, that's okay. So that's responding to what you're saying about the the, the soft the, the softness of it. Leave poor brute alone. <laughs> and Woozy's saying it was either that or Old Spice. Who knows? Maybe Old Spice is coming up. But um, very very seriously, um, what shape is brute in at the moment? Because I must confess, I have not smelt brute for the longest time. So if I were to go into a supermarket, and it would be a supermarket now, wouldn't it, and buy some brute, what, what, what would I smell now? First of all, it's very affordable. It's something that anybody can pick up for. Uh, here in the US, it's like less than 10 bucks, like nine, five, six, wow. seven dollars. Very cheap uh, for, for a small bottle like this. And especially if you go to the Scano's route, even cheaper. Um, it's not as pungent and powerful as it was, you know, back in the 60s, 70s and 80s, but it's still nice. It's still very powerful for like an hour or two. So like when you first, you know, shave and, and you splash it on or you spray it on, it, it's going to smell really good for, for, for the next few hours. And if people get close to you or when you sweat a little bit, it still gives off a nice little trail. I mean, I, I love it and I get compliments, believe it or not. It's something that that works well with my skin. So I never I've, I've had brute on my rotation for aftershave sort of thing since I was like in my teens when I started like shaving. So it's been something that I absolutely love from my father to me. And I think his father used to, to, to wear it as well. So it's like a generation type of a scent, you know? Uh, absolutely. And somebody's somebody's taken the words right out of our mouths, both of our mouths, I think. Time to musk up says, that stuff puts the put the first hairs on my chest. <laughs> it's that kind of perfume though, isn't it? Um, a classic herbal neck condiment. You're, you're on fire today with the descriptions. <laughs> That's really good. I like that one. Um, no, I, absolutely. My dad wore it. I mean, I always associate it with, with Iran when, when we were living in Iran. And, and Brute wasn't just the aftershave then, was it? But you had the soap. You had, you had all sorts of grooming oh, products. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. I, ne I, need to, I need to smell it soon, I think, to, 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 to find out what it's like. Okay, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. I love the fact that you put a huge smile on our face with that one. And we're all feeling kind of like this now, aren't we? Which was the idea. So I will go in a similar-ish direction, maybe, for my second one, with something that may generate an equal number of comments, but is actually a lot less, a lot less mainstream and a lot less well-known than, than Brute. And this is uh, Musk Kublai Khan from Serge Lutens. This is actually the oldest perfume on my list because this is from 1998. And like a lot of Serge Lutens perfumes, this one was composed by um, Christopher Sheldrake. And I believe it's not available in this format anymore. I, I, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's now in one of their more exclusive presentations. Yeah, the, um, little, the, little, be the little bell jars. Yeah, it's either the Bell Jar or the Black Skyscrapers. I can't remember which because they have the Black sky Skyscraper ones as well, but the, they often change their thing. But, I mean, all of that will be on their website anyway. And, well, I mean, this is like, you know how Brute has got that hairs on your chest? This this, this, this is either going to kind of like wax all the hairs off your chest, like... <laughs> um, 
Oh, uh, a lion is saying a lion, it's a black skyscraper now. So, uh, yeah, possibly, possibly. I think in French they're the gratte ciel. Um, but but we have Gavin saying it's the bell jar for MKK. So w w just go on the Serge Lutin's website and find out. This is, for those who are not aware of it, this is a super animalic musk. Okay. Uh, I think it has been described in the past as really, really skanky, you know, sort of like skank upon skank with no air getting in so that the skankiness just keeps getting multiplied by various factors of skankishness. Um, but I've also found, you know, it's interesting that you were talking about Brute having a tender side to it. Even though MKK is, is unquestionably animalic, maybe verging on the fecal, very, very musky, I also find that there is something soft and gentle about it. If you remember um, Kiel's musk, which I which I used to like wearing as well, I've always got a bottle of Kiel's musk somewhere. That what what makes that work is this juxtaposition, I think, of the hardcore raunchiness and the softness. And for me, the thing that I've always found exciting about this one is that it feels as though it's also got a very very interesting evocation of of steam. I always think of like clothes being pressed with a really, really hot steam iron and maybe there's still a little bit of moisture in the clothes and so that it generates more steam and it just kind of comes puffing up to you in this in this curious mixture of cleanliness and animalism. Um, I, th I think it's genius. I think it's genius and it, it growls, it purrs, it, it's, it's got an inner glow. Have you tried this one, Max? Yes, I actually own, I think it's probably three quarters of the way down. Uh, I still have a bottle. And you're right, it's got this rough um, introduction, but then it smooths out as it progresses. And I also find it correlation to the dry down, especially to musk ravageur. It's like they could be cousins or something. There, there's some, some musky uh, smoothness that I get in the dry down that it's quite similar to musk ravageur on my skin. Yeah, yeah that, that'd be interesting. I love it, by the way. Yeah, I mean, uh, Miss Cravager for me is uh, probably sweeter than this if I had to do a comparison. But yes, yes, I'm, I'm, uh, um, I completely go along with that. Uh, what's Rizwan saying? The most best and leading content writers in YouTube in action. Um, no one has reviewed Brute for decades, but I'm happy to see you talking. There you go. We're going to keep talking about Brute, I think. Um, and a comment here about uh, Muscoob Khan from David saying, I had a co-worker whose signature scent was MKK and it always came across soapy and spicy on him in a pleasant way. Well, soapy and spicy is quite exciting combination, isn't it? Um, what else have we got? Uh, people, uh, Time to Musk Up is saying that stuff is a beast. Uh, and also adding Serge Noir is also a beast with the spices. Um, and yes, I suppose for me, it's the beastliness. This is the sort of beastliest scent that I've put in this list of the five exciting ones, because I guess that's what I was referring to at the start of the broadcast when I was talking about trying to do different sorts of scents. So the the, the panorama is the kind of green electric one. This is the the animalic one. And, I, and I've tried to go for different genres, I suppose, different ex expressions of perfumery. To speak about um, Serge Noir. Serge Noir is equally beastly, but it has a very, very distinct and very powerful cumin note at the top, which is sometimes hard to bear because it gives off like yeah. a little bit of a sweaty BO kind yeah. of a kind of a vibe. But it gets better as it progresses. But the initial cumin is very, very strong on that. No, I'd go along with that one. And this is why I also love our viewers, Max, because the fragrance writer says, What's a modern or quality alternative to Brute these days? And uh, Woozy says, maybe Beau de Jour. And I think that's probably a good call. What would you say? I would say so. In fact, I have Beau de Jour, which uh, is something that I wear all the time for the office, which is also giving me that same kind of a vibe, you know, mm. uplifting and a little bit more um, smooth than Brute is. Um, I think there's there's a lot of a lot more vanilla in that than, than brute does, so it, it goes into a little bit of a different direction, but it, it's got the same structure. And Gabriella agreeing with you, saying Serge Noir is salty cloves beast mode. I like that. <laughs> Somebody needs to make a perfume called Salty Cloves Beast. <laughs> I like okay. that. Okay, over to you, sir. What's your third choice? 
So this is like a, a hidden gem of mine, something that no one really talks about here. And I shared a couple of times here and there, but it's something that I like to keep a little hush because you don't hear much about this fragrance. So I love fougeres. So if I can get a fougere that's also minty, I mean, this has mint, eucalyptus. It's got a lot of these very, you know, elements that will elevate my spirits when I put it on. Even if it's cold out, I would wear this. Um, so it's like an all year round great fragrance. Um, and it's called Kaleidoscope from Daniel Josier, which is a, a brand from Spain. Uh, it's an indie niche brand that doesn't really get much talk. I don't know if your, your viewers would probably know about have ever heard of know, know this brand but they have a couple really good ones there's a vetiver here that's really good there's an amber and tobacco one and the kaleidoscope one is my favorite because again it's got it's like this fougere vibe to it with all the components of a fougere the lavender the oak moss but then it has this really incredible uplifting bright citrus mint spicy mint and and eucalyptus that is just i've never smelled anything like it and then it also has in the base incense and oud. So it's really, really intricate. It starts just like you described some of your choices. It starts a certain way and it ends up a totally different way. But all in all, it's something that makes me feel energized, ready for the day. It smells really, really good. Uh, and it's called Kaleidoscope. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Right. Let me just zoom in on you there, Max. So it's Kaleidoscope and the brand is? Danielle Josier. Okay, now I've I've got to confess I've I've not heard of the brand I've not heard of that perfume. Do you know how long they've been around? Maybe five years, five six years. Okay, okay. Um, the the nobody so far on the comments have said that they're aware of it. If you are aware of this one, then please uh, let us know. We've I'm got intrigued. crickets. We've got crickets on this one. So far. So far, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, uh, but I mean, there will be somebody out there who's tried it, but I'm intrigued that somebody's got a question for you. I, I can't contribute to a discussion about that one because I've, I've, I've never smelt it, but it smells, it's, it sounds fantastic. Question for you from Gavin, does Max like body kouros from YSL? That one also has a very predominant uh, eucalyptus note and I do have it. I have an older bottle, which let me see if I can fetch it. I I like body kouros and I actually wondered about body kouros for today's broadcast, but but other ones. I mean, it was hard. I I always feel the same way when when I do these lists. There we go. Yeah, I've got the same. Well, yeah, I think it only ever came in that bottle, didn't it? I always it wasn't formulated and they changed the bottle. This is this, oh, okay. is, this is the original bottle. Okay, well, the, so so I've got I've got that one then. Okay, that's good. Um, I always think when I start choosing the perfumes for these lists, I think, oh, I'm never going to be able to come up with five. And then, of course, at the end, I'm thinking, oh, but I could have had this one. I could have had that one. I could have had that one. But to go back to your kaleidoscope, um, uh, DC uh, is saying I've heard of the brand, but not the fragrance. Uh, Jazz Bob says, yes, I've tried it, but wasn't too excited. Sorry. Well, fair enough. That, that's okay. And Gavin is saying about Body Kouros, a classic from Anique Minardo, absolutely. So that, that that's a good one. Thank you very much for that one. Now, we are basically at the halfway mark. We're doing okay. We're five perfumes down because you've done three, I've done two. So at this point, it, it would be, it, it's a good moment for me to say that if you're watching live, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And you are here seeing me, Persolaise and Max Forty going through a rundown of our top 10 best exciting perfumes. So perfumes that fill us with a sense of energy, dynamism, give us that kind of zing, make us feel invigorated. Feel free to leave a comment, ask a question. Please consider su subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. And please head over to Max's channel and subscribe to his as well. Although chances are that you have already subscribed to his because I think he has like 780,000 subscribers or something in that region. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm on to my third one. So where shall I go? Where shall I go? Okay. I wanted, this was the hardest one in a way to choose because I thought that I have to include a floral because I kept I kept thinking, my, my choices kept veering away from florals. And I thought, no, surely there must be a floral out there that is really dazzling and that that's what makes it exciting. And I, and I thought of a few and then I kept, I found myself uh, coming to, um, uh, coming to Frederick Mal. As somebody's just written at the moment, A2ZN1, I can't bring your comment up yet because, uh, there we go, is saying, so far, a lot of progesterone. How about some estrogen? I think maybe this is going to be the estrogen scent, maybe. Um, I went with Frederick Mal, 
and I've only got this one in the travel set. So this is this is carnal flower. Uh, it, it carnal flower is is that is that estrogeny? I mean, I, I suppose it's still quite testosterone as well, isn't it? But I find carnal flower really, really dazzling and really exciting. A to Z in one goes, aha, a floral. Thank you very much. Um, oh, um, oh, this is, this is uh, again, for the few of you out there who may not know, this is uh, Frederick Mal's take on tuberose. This was his homage to uh, Fraca from Piguet, for the longest time, Fracas was considered to be the kind of, you know, the ultimate tuberose scent. We also had Poison from Dior, of course, which we may be talking about when we come to our 80s episode, but Poison is a much more dressed up uh, sort of tuberose. And then along came Carnal Flower from Mal and, and sort of set, set a, a modern bar, a modern standard for how to do a tuberose. It's composed by Dominique Ropion. It came out in 2005. It really, to me, smells like a very, very hyper-realistic uh, tuberose, a little bit like the tuberose garlands that you get if you're fortunate enough to, to go to India, where they sort of make a lot of these tuberose garlands, garlands. So it's got that white floral, animalic, indolic feel, but it's also got a, a subtle coconut facet. It's got a subtle... Um, banana facet the way the way a lot of white florals do and a really really beautifully judged beautifully composed um musky base um it it is it is divisive so i've already seen somebody here saying woozy saying don't really like carnal flower can't stand tuberose but you're saying love tuberose um i have a full bottle of fracas says jeanne how does carnal flower compare I think carnal flower is probably a bit more outdoorsy smelling, a bit more naturalistic smelling, whereas fracas is <sighs> bared claws. Um, have you tried this one, Max? Yes, I have. And I think your description is perfect. And I also think in comparison, fracas is a lot scratchier and, and you know, a lot more concentrated and, and more in your face as carnal flower is a little bit more gentle, a little bit more subtle. Um and I do enjoy it. Uh, I'm not huge on florals, or although they're, the last two here will have more of a floral component. Uh, but like I said, I think that the, the grapefruits, the citruses, some of the florals, but mostly those components are usually what I gravitate towards when I'm thinking about energizing and, and exciting myself for, for, for the day. But it is a great one, and I think it's definitely one of the top five most you know talked about uh, Frederick Malls. So it, it is a great one. Who's the nose behind that one? Is it Dominique Robion? Dom Dominique Robion. And, and again, hats off to our viewers because somebody's just put it really, really well. April Spritz is saying Fraca is buttery, carnal flower is green. And absolutely, I didn't say I didn't say that it's got a marked green note as well. And both are big scents. And I think that's what's exciting about them. Just out of interest, the other Frederick Mal that I was wondering about was, and I nearly went for it, was the indelible Cologne, Cologne Indelebile. But I thought that maybe that might be veering more in the direction of Panorama. The reason why I love Cologne and Delebile is because it seems to have a very futuristic feel to it. It's like the sort of sci-fi Cologne. Um, is Carnal Flower bigger than the Naomi Goodso one, L L Lannan? So I suppose, Lannan, you're referring to the Bakelite Nights, Nuit de Bacalite, which is also a beautiful tuberose. Is it bigger? I would say maybe it is, um, but 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 not by much. So... That's my third one, my third one, yes, which means we're on to your fourth one. Over to Funny. you. I thought about uh, two fragrances from, from Frederick Mall, one of which uh, I think will make my, my top spring niche, which is uh, music for a while, which has this gorgeous pineapple note, but it can get a little bit syrupy um, and not as, as bright as I would like it. But anyway, I went with another more mainstream, but kind of like under the radar fragrance from Yves Saint Laurent. And this is going to be Cologne Gingembre. I love ginger. And I think this one here with the florals, along with the beautiful ginger that it has, it's very bright. It's really energetic. I mean, I love this fragrance for day wear. I mean, just another one that puts a smile on my face, makes me feel great. Um, it's just one of those easy to wear fragrances, but particularly the ginger here is very well done. Like you can really picture the spicy ginger crushed into the scent but it is more of a mainstream thing you're going to get some white musk a little bit of a violet some aquatic notes 
Uh, but the ginger here, and it's discontinued, and it's one of those under the radar fragrances that I've never really seen much people talk about. Uh, and I'm glad I have a bottle because um, I wear it very gingerly. <laughs> 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 one more pun like that, and you're kicked off, Matt. <laughs> um, but Max, just to be clear, so which one was it? So it's actually a flanker of. It's a flanker of loam. It's called no. Cologne okay. Gingembre. Okay. Okay. Now the 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 Lom the Lom range is one that has mostly kind of gone over my head because I think um, I sort of started smelling some of them and 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 I, I lost a little bit of patience and I and I didn't even know that this one was out. Um, do you remember speaking of ginger? Do you remember when Dior Homme Sport, when the first Dior Homme Sport came out, and that was another really really beautiful, invigorating gingery scent before they. Back, back when Jude Law was still the face of their advertising campaign for Dior Homme Sport. <laughs> okay, and he goes, and he's, he's probably going to have a, a bottle of it. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't it make you sick sometimes? <laughs> have you got yeah, it? This one came out, I believe, uh, mid-2000s. Um, Very possible. It... Yes, with the little red. Oh, you have so much of it left. <gasps> I love it. And this one has, this is the vintage one, which has the red uh, yes. nozzle. And yeah, it has a very predominant ginger. You're right. I, if I had remembered, I, I would have gone for this one rather than gingembre. This is this is incredible. It's sparkly. It's fizzy. It's, it's amazing. And it's been discontinued. And they brought it back, but I think in 2019 or something, but it's completely neutered and it's not what the fragrance was at all. So <laughs> I love I love somebody woozy saying the jealousy in Persolaise's eyes. Now I am really jealous because I this was this was that Dior Homme Sport, the first Dior Homme Sport, was a very, very rare example for me of buying a perfume as soon as I smelt it. And I remember it was at the massive branch of Sephora in Nice in the south of France. It had just come out one summer and I snapped it up because I thought this is amazing. And never did I think to myself that they would discontinue something like this. And of course, by the time I needed another bottle, it was gone. And I think I have just like the tiniest few drops left. So if ever I'm fortunate enough to make the journey over to your side of the world, Max, you may find that that bottle mysteriously vanishes from your collection. Um, as Sergio says, that Dior Homme Sport is awesome. It was so good. It was so, so, so good. Absolutely. Um, 2008 Dior Homme Sport says Scented Moments. Thank you very much. Um, and Angela says, so much scent and still Brute is top five. <laughs> We're going to have the Brute comments constantly coming. And we've, we are, we, I think we're with you, time to musk up. The new Dior Homme Sport is so bland. Yeah, bland is the word. And the, the gingeriness was, was just wonderful about that. That was a really good one. But we should say that the one that you went for was the was the ginger flanker of uh, YSL's. Long. Long. So thank you very much. That was a good one. And we're on to my fourth one. I'm going to go for this one because I wanted to choose something uh, that is really quite out there and really quite odd to show that sometimes perfumery as an art form can be exciting because it's innovative, because it presents you with something that you may not have uh, considered to have been possible in perfume for before. Um, now, I only have a kind of lab sample of this, which is back in the day when this was released by the brand, they, they sent me this. I don't have the proper bottle, but this is from Byredo, and it's from uh, 2010. And it's that I've never known exactly how you're meant to say the name of this. I don't know whether it's MM Inc. or M Mink, um, but it was a perfume that um, is meant to have in it the note of ink, as in, you know, fountain pen ink, ink for writing. And it really does. Um, now, if I smell it again now. It was composed by Jérôme Epinette, by the way, who has done a lot of uh, the scents for Byredo. He's done a lot of these scents for... Atelier Vil Cologne? Yes, for Wilhelm Perfumery. I'm, you will may know better than I do, but I think he did the latest one for Kirin NYC, didn't he? He did Rose Inc, I think. Yes, he did. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's just so strange because it's 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 very 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 metallic, and so the metal maybe sends you a little bit in the direction of blood, um, but it also smells bitter and sour, um, 
I, we don't really have such a strong association with ink anymore, I don't think. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I still used to use a, a fountain pen. I mean, I personally still use a fountain pen for my writing because, because, because I'm just geeky like that. But I think even the design of fountain pens has improved so that you don't end up getting so much ink on your fingers. But getting ink on your fingers was quite a common thing, I think, for me as a kid. And, and that's that metallic, sour, tart, almost citrusy, slightly bloody, acrid, sharp smell was very, very familiar to me. Now, okay, I think as it progresses, it starts heading into leather territory and maybe becomes a little bit more of a tangy leather, but a bit more familiar tangy leather. But it's it's just extraordinary because even though I have never had the experience of smelling like an octopus squirting ink in my face or a squid. No, do, does an octopus do that or is it just a squid? I don't know. Um, it feels like this thing has just pop, pop, sprayed wow. this ink in, in your face. It's, or you're saying a tattoo in a bottle, maybe. I mean, I've never, sm I've, I don't have any tattoos. I don't know what tattoo ink smells like either. Um, M ink says, is such a difficult sense, says Arm. Um, Yes, I agree. But I think that's kind of what I find exciting about it, the fact that it's challenging. And so that's why I included it here, because I wanted to show that you can have something tricky and challenging and weird and bizarre as an exciting scent as well. Do you know this one, Max? No, I have not tried that one. I do enjoy the House of Byredo, but that's one of those that I haven't yet tried. Um, but I do enjoy the inky vibe that I get also on certain fragrances like... Uh, Encre Noir, I also get that same inky vibe on Silver Mountain Water from Creed. There's a few of those fragrances out there. And it is challenging, but it's also, I don't know, it makes you feel a little bit, um, I guess it invigorates a little bit because it, because of the weirdness, the, the, the intrigue factor. Um, but I haven't yet tried that one, but I am curious to try it. But I, I, can, I can agree with that, with the, min, with the metallic note. And the funny thing is my last pick here will also have a metallic note. That's a funny thing. Which one? Sorry. I'm saying my last pick that I'm about to reveal. Oh, well, sorry. The one coming up. Okay. Well, well, oh, okay. Interesting. Note. Um, uh, Gavin says the ink note is too close to bleach for me. And it, it, it's interesting. As soon as you say bleach, I'm thinking, yeah, but that's also something that's quite fascinating about it. And I didn't say incense. It's got a very, very marked incense note here as well. And it's almost as though the incense is the link between the le leatheriness and the inkiness. You're as very pleased that we finally got to find something that you haven't tried, Max. Ha ha. <laughs> um, there's a perfume called The Writer that has a successful ink note too, says Gavin. Do you mean The Writer from St. Giles? I wonder if you mean that one. Um, to me, St. The, the Writer from St. Giles is notable for its uh, rosemary note. But but yeah, I suppose you could say it's got an, it's got an inky note in there as well. Um, Anna says, I had a chance to smell exotic lamp black. Isn't that... Uh, isn't lamp black Bruno Fazzolari? I'm not sure. It's supposed to be inky. The fragrance makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah, well. Oh, there you go. Another pun. Andy saying ink sense. Very good. Very good, Andy. Well done. And Bren saying squid from Zoologist must have that ink note. I haven't tried squid. I'm a little bit off. They're a little bit um, off the radar for me. Um, and I guess that means we're down to your last one, sir. So over to you. So this one here is a fragrance that I discovered last year, and it quickly became one of my favorites. It has a very intriguing factor of this trifecta of sea salt, uh, metallic note, and ambergris, which, you know, combined in of itself, it's, it's really intriguing and really different. But it also has some other florals in the mid, like jasmine, ylang ylang, some oud in the base, along with ambergris. I mean, the notes themselves are very intriguing, and you'd think, how would that go together? But it's done in a very meticulous way. The fragrance itself is like if you're sitting down at this waterfall and you're just being hit by this, 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 you know, just wave of water that's brisk and salty and you know, invigorating, and it just energizes me. And the fragrance I'm talking about is Wet Stone by Amro which I don't know if you're familiar with this brand, but it has quickly become one of my favorite indie niche brands. It's uh, They're here in New York, and what they create is just incredible. Really nice executed fragrances, just, just like I said, meticulously done. 
And whetstone is one of my favorites for spring and summer when I want to just get a, a you know, a, you know, a spritz of energy. Like you talked about Panorama having this, you know, electric kind of a feel. I get the same vibe with this one here. It's just, you know, it also has this fruitiness to it. It smells like a million bucks. If you want something that's really going to transpose you and make you feel like you just had like electricity, you know, inject, injection of electricity, definitely check this out. Whetstone. I just, I mean, the name doesn't sound that, you know, interesting, but the scent itself is, is absolutely out of this world. I was going to say, actually, thanks for that one, that I find the name intriguing because because the, the smell of, of, of a wet stone, like with, with the sun beating down on a wet stone, is actually a very, very particular sort of smell. Now, I, I am aware of um, Amarud. I want to say that I think in the UK or at least in London, maybe they're, they're available at Harrods or at a, a shop called Javoy. I could be wrong. I'm sure people will be able to find out. But I don't know that one. Um, yeah. This has been around for a couple years, I want to say, and I just found out about it last year, and it just, you know, it just blew my mind. I was like, "Wow, what is this?" And that metallic, seen salty note, along with the ambergris, it's a little bit earthy, but it's it's sparkly, it's fizzy, but at the same time, it's got this woods and stone, like solar stone kind of a vibe. Really intriguing, really different, uh, very powerful scent too. Like a couple of sprays will last the whole day. It's just very well made, very well constructed. The bottle I, I am intrigued. Too. I'm intrigued. I'm thoroughly intrigued. And you've got at least one person here saying, I've been wanting to try Whetstone since I saw your review on it, Max. So I guess I'm guessing you reviewed it as well. Yeah, it constantly makes uh, a lot of my top spring and summer just because I, I, I find myself wearing this so much, you know, yeah. when it's nice and warm out and I want to feel springy. Even in colder days, if I want to have like a little bit of electric feel, I go for this fragrance. Yeah. Time to Musk Up says, smells like mineral water steaming. Yes, I guess that's the kind of image we're getting, isn't it? Um, I saw also just earlier people writing about a perfume called Mortal Skin. Mortal Skin has a great ink accord. Um, I, I don't know that one. What's the brand for that one? Do you know Mortal Skin, Max? Yeah, it's by Stephen Hubert. Um, I'm trying to remember the last name. It's uh, Triple Seven. Stephen Hubert. Oh, Stefan Humber Lucas. Or... That's it. That's it. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't know he had one. Okay, thank you very much. Right. Um, I'm intrigued by that one. Whetstone. I'm going to remember that one. Um, Bren says, knife sharpening on a whetstone, metallic and heated by friction. That's a good one. That's very evocative. That, that, that That's almost a brief for a perfume. That's a good one. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm down to my last one. And I said that there would have to be at least one all-out leather even though it doesn't call itself a leather, but I haven't gone for a leather that I've mentioned before because I want, you know, I just thought spread the love a little bit as well and, and mention brands that I don't normally talk about. Now, this is this is the original bottle in which this perfume came out in, in, in 2015, but I believe it's now in a different bottle. This is from Pierre Guillaume or Parfumerie Générale, uh, and this is called, this is, this is where Persolet's mangles the French language, because this is called Metal Hurlant. And I think that translates as howling metal or screaming metal. But I think howling is a, is a better description. Uh, and it was inspired by chrome and Harley Davidson motorbikes and, and everything that you would associate with Harley Davidson motorbikes. I believe there was also a short-lived French science fiction TV series called Metal uh, So who knows that that the, the predates the perfume. So it may be that the perfumer was um, inspired by that. Uh, when when the perfumer did this particular range for his brand, he put the certain perfumes in that range. I think they may have been called the Cruise range. I can't remember exactly in these bottles, but now they're in more standard bottles. And this was again an instant love for me when I smelt it when I came out. I mean, I'm a sucker for leather perfumes anyway, but this seemed to be doing something interesting about the leather because it does have that metallic sheen to it, that chrome sheen to it. So this is this real contrast between, I suppose, the organic quality, the, the, the physical visceral quality of leather and the very, very manufactured, shiny quality of, of chrome. And it, it just immediately makes you think of speed and 
dashing off somewhere into the horizon, into the distance, leaving like a kind of dust storm behind you. Um, I, I guess it has a green quality to it. And smelling it now straight after the Byredo, actually, I'm thinking, oh, th th there's, there's something of that sort of bleach stripped quality of the leather that that they, that they may have in common. Um, but I love this and, and I don't I don't wear it enough. Uh, it, I think it's one of the more underrated ones from from Pierre Guillaume. I'm guessing from the look on your face that this is another one that you don't know, Max. Don't know. I don't own many from Pierre Guillaume. I have, I think, number two and I think I have number 12 from his range, the ones that have the numbers in the bottles. Uh, yeah. But never really delve into the brand too much. Uh, I had a brief conversation with him at his son's, but I don't know. Just, just it's impossible to smell everything, and it's actually good. It's good to 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 hear about these things because then I'm obviously going to to procure to try to smell. It sounds interesting, very interesting. I mean, yes, you're right. We can't smell it everything. And Angela's just prompted me to say something as well. Has it got a rubber note like Bulgari Black? It absolutely does have a rubber note as well. You're right. So it's like the tires of the motorbike, but maybe not so much like Bulgari Black because. For me, with Bulgari Black, I've always mostly just got tea from Bulgari Black, not so much the rubber. I know for a lot of people, it is the rubber. Woozy's That's not Nick Minardo, right? Bulgari Black? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, Woozy's saying, is it like a vintage Fahrenheit, this one? Fahrenheit is so violet leaf. Although I guess maybe that gasoline. Yes, I know you have several vintage Fahrenheits, Max. You don't need to show off. It's fine. <laughs> Somebody's asking to be kicked I off. Want to do it. I want to do it for fun because this is probably another one that's going to disappear, right, from my shelf. No, you're okay because I have some vintage Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, we've got here somebody saying Metal Hurlant was a famous French science fiction comic known in the English-speaking world as heavy metal. Okay, thank you very much. And Jazz Bob saying, sounds qu like quite the daring fragrance. Yes, I, su I suppose it is, and 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 probably best worn with a leather jacket. Gavin saying patchouli twenty four would be choice of exciting leather. Patchouli twenty four almost made it to this list for me as well because I consider that to be Le Labo's patchouli twenty four. Also, Anique Minardo. I consider that to be a really really interesting sci fi leather too. But I thought I've mentioned Le Labo. Let's just do one that that we haven't talked about before. I uh, think that would actually be somebody mentioned about daring. I think that would be a cool topic, like the the most daring and difficult to wear fragrances that will you know uh, evoke double take on people. Like, what does that smell? I think that would yeah. be a, a fun uh, topic to talk about. We should do that. We should do that because again, for those of you who are not aware, what we're doing at the moment is that over on Max's channel, we're going through our favorite perfumes from the decades. But over on my channel, we've decided to do some lives on slightly more kind of going off on a curve type concepts and topics like this one. So we totally should do that. And I like your idea as well, Yuri, saying you both should do a guilty pleasure perfume list. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Um, you two should do a top 10 unicorn fragrances that you own. <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah, well, great. Max will have a lot more than me, I think. <laughs> many, 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 many more. Okay. So, oh, I love this one from Arm saying, Patchouli 24 smells like bacon on my skin. I mean that in the best way possible. I completely know what you mean. It does have a kind of roasted meat quality to There's it as well. one fragrance from Imaginary Authors that smells like straight smoked bacon. I can't remember right now. It's a dark uh, uh, bull's blood, I think it's called. It smells like straight up, you know, smoked cooked bacon. It's like, whoa, you know? Yeah. Now, I haven't smelled that one. So we've got some very, very good ideas. Okay, and I think we can say that we are pretty much done. So thank you very much to everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much for all of the interaction. I know I've said it before and I will keep saying it again. It's the fact that you interact and that you send us all of these comments and ask these questions and, and that you share your knowledge with us. I'm always so astounded by how knowledgeable you are. It's all of that that makes these live broadcasts so fun and enjoyable. But of course, it is also the, the quality of my distinguished guests uh, and I wanted to say this. I wanted to say this. The quality of your distinguished guests are incredible. I love it here. It's it's a breath of fresh air. I meant you, Max. I meant you. <laughs> no, it, it, it's 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 a uh, you know it's really amazing. Like the, the the knowledge and you know how interactive they are, how kind they are. Because 
you know, I, I see the fragrance community through a whole scope. So I see the good, the bad, the ugly. And I think here they're very educated. They're very, you know, red people. They're very uh, kind. So kudos to your channel. Pleasure always to be here. And I think uh, it's, it's nothing but fun and, and just uh, sharing our passion uh, with your viewers, which is, you, which is you can all give yourselves a thumbs up, but also a very special thank you to you, Max. Thank you for giving up your time. Thank you for sharing your collection. Thank you for being such a great sport. Angela saying, love that. Great live. And thanks to you, Persilase and Max, for an interesting and entertaining hour. Not at all, Angela. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I'll let you have, I'll let you say goodbye. Thanks for being here. Uh, all I can say is thank you so much for having me. Uh, and, you know, I'll see you guys soon with another uh, interesting and uh, head scratching uh, live with uh, Persilase, Papa Persilase in the future. No. No, that we're not. That is not going to stick. That is not going to stick. OK, thanks very much, everybody. And stay tuned to my social media channels for details of the next live episodes. But until then, be good and I will see you soon. Bye.